Alright, howdy guys. Actually, girls. Uh, kind of want to direct this video to uh, the ladies. Uh, one of the biggest problems I see on a lot of these internet videos is, for ladies especially, is they're not gripping the gun properly, which is causing malfunctions. It causes uh, a lot of times stove pipes, uh, short stroke on the, side, the slide, and uh, <coughs> excuse me. One of the major problem is with with ladies shooting is most guys have a bad grip too. Uh, first, we're going to danger check this weapon system. Uh, Hot magazine, round in the pipe, gun is loaded. Uh, so I want to make first point: uh, nobody in the room's dead because the gun is loaded. Uh, your primary safety is, in fact, right here. That's your trigger finger. Keep it off trigger until you're ready to fire. But now that we're going to actually manipulate this weapon, I am going to unload it. Uh, so, let's talk a little bit about the grip. Most guys hold a gun wrong. A lot of the guys I see on here making videos, for whatever reason, they are... They've got a, an incorrect grip as well. But because typically guys have stronger hands picking up hammers pounding on things or whatever they do and stronger forearms they are able to muscle through a bad grip unfortunately ladies really don't have that luxury so the grip is paramount absolutely the most important thing for a girl to get right uh, you know one of the things in law enforcement used to hack me off teaching law enforcement classes is Girls would show up the range with 9mm. 9mm Glock, one of the most prevalent law enforcement handguns out there. Uh, and they'd start to have stovepipe problems. And a lot of people's answer to a female shooting a 9mm and it's stovepiping is, well, we'll get them bigger caliber. We'll get them a 40 or 45, more recoil. And then they use that as a reason to step them up in caliber size when it is a mechanical solution a bad mechanical solution to the problem uh, if they just learn to grip the gun properly and then the body position to go with it which uh, I'll do another video on body position here later uh, this is just a quick video because I was watching a lady trying to learn to shoot a 45 and she was having problems with it jamming and all that first thing you have to understand and that's just it for women to women need to understand uh, as part of their psyche you know you can't just say okay this gun shoots they need to understand why it's jamming on them okay this is a recoil operated weapon system so what happens when you have a magazine in the gun it looks like so with no uh, with the slide off of it okay inside here you have the barrel and locking assembly this is the chamber where the bullet goes this little piece of metal right here is called the stripper Okay, how this works, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this do this, but I'm going to try as best I can. How this is going to work is when your magazine is setting here, the recoil action of the gun, as the gun unlocks and slide, the slide slides back, ejects the spent round. As it comes forward, it's got to make it the whole way back to where that stripper falls. Turn on my light, see if that helps here. It's got to make it back to where the stripper falls over that next bullet. And then what will happen is it pushes forward, and as the barrel comes back in, 
get it all set up here that magazine or that slide actually pushes or strips the next round off the magazine comes completely forward and puts it into battery like so okay so the stripper is a extremely important aspect for you to get a proper chambering of a round the other problem that we're going to have when uh, is the ejection which I'm going to see if I can point this out which I guess I'm going to need it in <coughs> the gun you know how a gun operates is honestly the most important part of shooting it understanding it how it, how it truly operates okay so here there's two parts to an ejection system an ejection system you got your extractor and ejector. This is an ejector right here, this little piece of steel. So what's going to happen, and I guess I don't know how to make this, you see this, as when your barrel's in here and locked up in that position in the gun, okay, that's actually up a little bit like so. As your extractor comes in and grabs this bullet, it's going to slide it all the way back until it hits your ejector or your yeah your ejector and then that side pressure over here and then this little piece of steel as a, the slide comes back is what throws the spent casing out of the gun so what this means is if you short stroke it or if you limp wrist it and you let the gun short stroke meaning not go all the way back and all the way forward that's what causes your ejection problems so what's truly got to happen for the for this weapon system to operate perfectly every time is you have to have enough forward pressure on the gun to allow it to go all the way back as you can see there's our ejector our extractor is this little piece here on the side the extractor pulls on it the ejector pushes it, throws it out of the gun. So if you don't have enough forward pressure this way on the gun and you let it do something like that, that's what's going to cause a lot of your jams. So, because the 9mm typically does not have as much recoil as a lot of the other weapon systems out there, like 40 or 45, 357 SIG, you got to have it right. You absolutely have to have the grip right. So, to make the gun work completely backwards and forwards, and I hear a lot of guys, you know, and, and, and girls, because they've been told by guys, you need to shoot a revolver, because it's simpler. And, you know, my wife really isn't smart enough to, you know, operate a semi-automatic handgun. Well, girls, you ought to slap the taste out of their mouth if you ever hear them say that, because, you know, girls are some of the most multitasking people in the world. I mean, my wife for years has got dinner ready, kept the kids happy, you know, changed the babies, worked on, you know, online school where I used to do all that stuff at once. She can multitask. So the problem is, is nobody's ever taken the time to show you how to run that weapon system. Uh, so, so here's some of the things you need to understand about a gun and we're going to talk about a Glock, different weapon systems have different things. There are only a couple controls you truly need to understand. You have a slide lock lever. I'm sorry, slide stop, this is slide lock. Slide stop lever. What slide stop does is lock slide to the rear. It is not a release. That is not how you should be chambering the gun. This, you should be grabbing it, and a lot of girls don't have the hand strength to do it this way. So, the alternate method, which is like the slingshot, is an acceptable deal. If you can go over the top of it and stroke it, power stroke it, that's great. If you can't, try turning it and run it. The first thing you have to understand is once you have your pistol hand on that gun, this hand should never change places. That grip, this part of your grip, will never change. Uh, so we're not going to change hands 
and grab it with our right hand. You want to leave it, if you're right-handed, you need to leave the gun in your right hand and do this with your left hand. However you need to figure out how to manipulate that. Uh, you know, preferred, over the top, pull it back, let it go. Second thing you have to understand, everything, every time you fire it, the slide goes all the way back and all the way forward with no support from your hand. You can do this eight gazillion times. You can't hurt the gun. That's what it does when it fires. So don't ride the slide forward. By riding the slide forward, I mean don't let it go in slow. Your natural reaction is you don't want to let it slam together. It needs to slam together to work. Okay? Uh, talk about a little problems with grips. And one of the next common things I hear is, well, the grips, the, the grips on these double stacks are just too big for me. I, I just can't hold a big gun. You just don't know how to hold a big gun. It, it has nothing to do with the grip size. If your hands are positioned properly, you can shoot any gun. 50 Action Express, Desert Eagle, doesn't matter what it is, you can shoot it if you're doing it properly. The first thing you have to understand is this gun, when you press the trigger, physics is going to apply itself and it's going to follow the path of least resistance. It's going to recoil. You can't stop that. So what you need to learn to do is mitigate the recoil or control the recoil. Make the recoil do what you want to do. The first thing you need to have is a, is a fairly good stance. Uh, stance is not all important, but it does help. Uh, slight bend at the knee, slight bend at the waist, roll your shoulders for you, forward. Uh, you know, If you learn to roll your shoulders forward, that'll solve your problems of your boobs being in the way, ladies. That's just what it is. But if you learn to kind of pick your arms up over top and roll them over, lean forward a little bit. I, I, I like to tell people it's either a batter stance or a wrestler stance as they're getting ready to wrestle. Uh, kind of envision that. The next thing you have to do is you need as high up into this back strap as you can be. Ideally, if we were going to manage recoil, that's how we'd hold the gun. Right there. We want all that energy from that slide, which is as part of the gun that moves, to come back into these major bones and muscles in our arm. Obviously, you can't shoot a gun like that. Because if you do, uh, you, you'll do that once. So, you'll notice that most good weapon systems will have this higher tang in it. Uh, excuse me for a minute. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My daughter's on her way somewhere and she's getting a little bit lost. I was giving her some directions. But anyway, uh, you need to climb up on here as far as you can. So, the important part is, the most important part of the grip is to be as high up into this back strap as you can be. Now, most common thing I see on the range, next thing girl does, because they've been taught with revolvers for a long, long time, to put that thumb over here. So, what's going to happen if I put my thumb up there? If I'm going to try and leave it there, when that slide comes back, it's going to bite me, and it's going to cut me, and you're going to be bleeding. So, that's why we got to find a place for this hand and this thumb. Here's the easy way. If you take your hand and put it in a 45 degree down angle and point your thumb at the target, okay? Take our gun, open this thumb up, and put it on the gun. Now close it. It's that simple. That is a decent grip, okay? I found, like, with the Glock, I have an access, an index point for my thumb. My thumb always goes right here to the slide lock lever, right there, every time. That's where I like to shoot it. That way I have an index point. If your thumb reaches past that or not as far on that, it doesn't matter. The object is to put as much meat of your hand on all this black as you can. If you'll notice, when I get my grip... I've got literally all that black covered up. Therefore, the gun has no place to go. So, it's going to transfer all that energy into my arms. One of the things I see people shooting is this. Okay, see this airspace right here? When the gun fires, it's going to follow into that airspace. Okay, see the, the teacup and saucer. Well, again, we have a place for that 
energy to transfer. Uh, I've kind of seen some of this almost shooting a rifle up here on the front deal. The problem with that is now you've got your fingers forward of the muzzle, it becomes dangerous. Trust me, this grip is not hard. It's a little uncomfortable to start with, but you need to spend a little time working on it and it becomes better. And then you'll learn to run these guns. So, first thing you got to do, get a high up into the back strap as we can. High tang grip is what that's called. Up in there, tight. Wrap these three fingers. Leave your primary safety off the trigger until you're ready to use it, okay? Now, point our thumb at the target. 45 degree at down angle with our fingers. Put it in there. Close it. Wrap your right thumb over top here. And now you've got it closed. This is an effective grip. This is what will help you mitigate that recoil. Put both your arms straight out in front of you. Line up sights, press trigger as needed. Uh, it's not a comfortable grip to start. It's not going to work. One of the things I like to tell people, how can I, you know, how do I know if I've got the grip close? If your thumb and your index finger are roughly straight across, you know you've got a pretty good purchase on the gun. you got a decent grip. Close these fingers on that side. Close up the air spaces. Uh, like I said, ladies, there's no gun out there you can't shoot. Uh, if you search, and, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce her name wrong. Her name is Tori Nokia. Nokia. Type Tori and Glock. She, uh, she's little... Uh, she's probably 18, 19 years old now, but when she first started shooting, she was 15, 16 years old, weighed 80 pounds, shoots full frame guns, and she does an awesome job at it. Her recoil mitigation and her grip are flawless. Please, girls, go search her up. Uh, I'll find her and put a link in the bottom of this video. Uh, to my favorite video is her at, a singer, at Single Stack Nationals and uh, Single Stack 1911 full frame nine, uh, 45 ACPs and uh, she's running that gun like a champ uh, that's why she's a champion but uh, at the time she might have been like 16 the video I use I show up my concealed carry classes and she has first you see the video from the side and then she's wearing a pair of like glasses that recorded or a, a cap cam or something to that effect so you can see her grip you can see you know you're seeing down her sight picture you're seeing exactly what she's seeing and exactly how she's running that gun so uh, don't let people convince you ladies that you can't run a big gun you need to run a revolver don't let them convince you you're not smart enough to run an automatic you are uh, these guys that handicap their girls by giving them revolvers, what they're doing is they're taking you and limiting you to five or six bullets, which the reload on a revolver, to me, is much more complicated than the reload on an automatic. I mean, just taking the, you know, pressing the magazine release, removing the empty magazine, that gets about as easy as it gets. So, ladies, don't let these pricks convince you you're not smart enough to run this gun because you are uh, you're probably more capable of it than a lot of guys I know uh, spend a little bit of time working on that grip at the house before you go to the range get it to where it feels comfortable get that 45 degree angle put the gun out there put it together That's all you gotta do it is a one two three operation one get a good good grip here wrap those fingers two make your 45 degree down angle point your thumb at the target three put the gun in the hole close it one two three so work on that grip uh, get sight alignment right next thing you know you'll go to the range you'll smoke your boyfriend smoke your husband you'll become much better at it than they are uh, understand that the way that a lot of guys are holding guns or shooting guns and I don't even know if I can do some of the stupid grips I see out there but they're just strong enough to make it work they're strong enough to hold this basically what happens to happen is the bottom of the gun has to stay as still as possible so the top of the gun is completely stroke it needs to go all the way back 
and all the way forward without anything in its way. So if you only hold it and you let your wrist go back, see that's what's happening. When you let your wrist break over, the gun's starting to come back and then you let your wrist break over. Or you don't hold it at the bottom of the gun. One of the ways to cheat, and this sucks, but you can cheat it, is if you're still having malfunction problems like this. One of the things you can do, what's typically happening is you're letting your pinky and your uh, ring finger roll forward and letting the gun break over. One of the ways you can cheat this until you get better at it, and please don't do this long, is if you take and you wrap this finger up and pull back. If you pull back with this finger to pull the, the heel of your hand into the gun, you will stop a lot of the stove pipe problems. This is acceptable. It's not ideal because what you're doing is now you're putting pressure on the gun to shoot left and that can cause that but if you're having a stove pipe issue or you're having a jamming issue and you just can't get it held if you take your index finger of your reaction hand wrap it up over the trigger guard and pull back a little bit this will allow you to much easier manage the recoil and get the gun to at least operate uh, not preferred but it works so uh, anyway like I said quick little video uh, for ladies holding that gun please put a little time and effort into it uh, you need to know how to operate your weapon system and know how to make it work uh, that is now a loaded gun and again notice nobody died in the making of this video loaded guns or what keeps people alive. People not knowing their gun loaded is what gets people dead. So, that being said, guys, appreciate you watching. Uh, got any questions or comments, please. Uh, ladies, especially if you've got questions. Uh, if I'm not showing you something in, uh, in a way you need to know, send me a message. Or I'll, I'll cut a video a different way. Uh, but please understand, girls, you can shoot any gun a guy can shoot. You can shoot it as effective, if not more effective, than they can. It's all about learning how to control it. Uh, don't let your guys handicap you into revolvers. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a revolver if you want to learn how to run it. Problem is, a lot of times the revolver is handed to a girl basically with the intentions of, there you go, you got five or six shots, you run out of bullets, you're just SOL. But, then the guy straps on the Glock 19 puts two extra magazines in his pocket. He wants you to have five bullets, but it's perfectly okay for him to have 45. That don't work that way. Uh, learn to run one of these full frame, you know, these mid-frame Glocks or whatever gun. I, any, you know, I preach Glock, but any good quality weapon system. If you're not spending $500 on it, it's not something you should be carrying. Uh, Glock's about $500 bill. Smith & Wesson M&P, about a $500 bill. The Ruger SR9, about $500 bill. Uh, the, that's kind of the baseline for, you know, a good combat weapon system. So, all right. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. you got questions, please ask. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.